ACM Facility Safety, Thought Leaders in Risk Consulting and Training, Making the World a Safer Place. This is the Safeguard Profiler Certification Workshop. ACM Facility Safety, a division of ACM Automation Inc., was founded in 1994, based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. There are three business units, training, software application, engineering services. What is the purpose of this company? Make the world a safer place. And what is the vision? All ACM clients achieve, achieve safety or safe operational excellence. So setting up for Safeguard Profile Workshop. Well, first of all, um, that's with respect to you setting up or getting ready to uh, start listening to this uh, workshop. What do you want to learn? Why is it, are you evaluating the software or do you really uh, want to learn some additional uh, safety instrumented function uh, concepts and so on? I would recommend you to please make a list of uh, questions as we go along. You learn by asking questions. You might have a list of questions and then I'll be happy to try to answer all those questions uh, after. So what is the purpose uh, and scope of this workshop? So what is the workshop objective? This workshop is designed to deliver instruction on the use and application of SafeGuard Profiler software. It is proven in use product. And what is the purpose that we're going to be using it? Uh, well, th we're going to get into that um, just shortly. <coughs> so we have to understand uh, certain principles uh, and concepts and definitions before we start working with SafeGuard Profiler. Where does SafeGuard Profiler fit in the safety life cycle? First of all, we will have to understand what is the safety life cycle. So at the beginning, we will have to review all important concepts with respect to functional safety. And we will dismiss some uh, misconceptions and create clarity and purpose on the benefits of uh, doing layer protection analysis, for example, uh, which is a methodology for seal determination. We will also look at other methodologies that are also included in the software, such as risk graph. And we learn how to use Safeguard Profiler software efficiently. So one thing is to uh, look at a software and work in the as a with the basic uh, features that it has, but is it efficient to work that way? There are certain techniques to work with the software and I will hope that I could bring that to you. We're going to divide this in several sections, so the overview. The first one, as I said before, concept review. What are the What is the safety life cycle? And what are the phases and where does um, Safeguard Profiler fit in those phases? What is Safeguard Profiler and where is the Safeguard Profiler used in, the, in that safety life cycle? What is the relationship between HAZOP and Safeguard Profiler if you never heard the word HAZOP? Well, we're going to get in a little bit into what is a hazard and operability study and how does it relate to what Safeguard Profiler can provide you. We will look at the risk graphs, uh, layer protection analysis methods, and we'll look a little bit about uh, the safety layer metrics, uh, which is going to be combined with the risk graphs uh, methodology all these uh, three methods are methods for seal determination and we will find out then what is seal determination. We need to know concepts such as safety integrity level, SIL, probability of failure on demand, PFD, PFD average, mitigated frequency, tolerable frequency, risk reduction factors, reliability, and so on. So the, all those concepts um, before we start working with the tool, we have to know ab about them. The second part of this first section will be what is still the, uh, verification. Mean time to restore, proof testing, test coverage, diagnostic coverage, safety failure fraction, reliability block diagram, safety requirement specifications. What are the safety requirement specifications? So by this moment, when I present the safety life cycle, you will see where do the safety requirement specifications and why are they important and why are they included in Safer Profiler tool. Then the second section will be getting to know more about Safer Profiler, but this time I already probably have done some exercises with you. 
uh, with respect to importing HAZOPS in Size Safeguard Profiler. So the second section will be uh, installing Safeguard Profiler. Then we will uh, move around inside the software, access and navigations, how to open a project, how to create a project, how to close a project. And then we start creating a new project and uh, setting it up. We will already by this time uh, done an import of HASOP. Now we will display that HASOP setup. Then we will create a LOPA scenario. And then we'll start going a little bit into, the, into a session of uh, seal determination using layer protection analysis. Then we continue with alternate scenarios, or you might call them what if scenarios. So what if is this happen? What if is that happen? And you can always refer back to your, let's call it master scenario. So this part is very qualitative, and it is qualitative part that appears in every methodology uh, up to this point of uh, hazard and risk analysis, right? So then later on, we'll go into risk graph analysis, risk graph, and again, the same uh, alternate scenario. So we can have scenarios uh, for which we might have different settings or we might have different um, path that we're taking at those moments, depending on the decisions making the scenarios credible, uh, certain um, sensitivity analysis that we can call it, certain point of view. So then we're going to go into safety instrumented functions, loop verification, creating the architecture, the reliability block diagrams. We're going to derive the function for probability of failure on demand average and what that means. So then we're going to be doing some um, loop linking. That means that we're going to link the safety instrumented function loops uh, to the LOPA scenario that uh, was analyzed and required an additional safeguard. And that additional safeguard was this uh, specific or special safety instrumented function that we can engineer and design. Later on, we're going to learn another techniques, connect uh, safety instrumented functions loop to other safety instrumented function loops to simplify a little bit um, some possible scenarios that are kind of complicated from with respect to architecture of the mm, sensor element or the final element. And then, most importantly, go to the safety requirement specifications. What are they? And how are they built into safety profiler? Then we're going to talk about something uh, called contingency planning and risk exposure. This contingency planning um, it should have been done um, more often, but uh, we kind of don't do it in when we're doing this hazard analysis uh, studies, which should be part of those ones. For those are contingency planners, for example, when a safeguard fail. Uh, so what do you do in those cases? I'm sure that somehow in your plan you already have those contingencies uh, from the operations point of view. They already know more or less what to do in certain cases. Well, there are important cases that are, might be qualified as critical cases, and those cases would be very good to have the experts in the room that are already doing the session, the layer protection analysis section, or hazard operability section, start coming up with uh, those contingency plans. What do I do if I'm in this situation? This situation might be, for example, that a safeguard is not there for whatever reason. Is out of service. Is just during is m uh, during maintenance, and uh, so what do you do? The risk exposure is there. So we're going to be trying to close that risk gap, and when that safeguard is not there, so the risk gap opens up. Are you going to keep running, or are you going to stop running? Are you going to trip your plan? And if not, um, so are you going to be running more aware of the situation? Maybe it would be good to start thinking about implementing a contingency, right? A second uh, plan B uh, in case you want to keep running. Otherwise, it would be advisable to stop. Then we're going to look at reports and what um, different type of reports you can do. This tool allows you the flexibility to create your own reports and tailor major reports. Uh, you might have want to have different type of reports, one report that is useful for operations, right? And one report that is useful for someone that knows about probabilities or the reliability department is interested in having different information uh, from the same pool of data. And then um, 
also we're going to importing and exporting uh, projects that's the way that we save the project section 3 safeguard profiler interfa interfaces to external data for example the connection with um, Microsoft Excel we're going to see how we can uh, what is the structure of those files for example importing the HASA um, file inside safeguard profiler so that we can regroup those scenarios and create those uh, layer protection and analysis scenarios do the analysis and then later on complement that data with the uh, seal verification and then we're going to go through some uh, cases right so we're going to do these uh, guided examples so we're going to go through the uh, butane sphere and a sour hydrogen gas reciprocating compressor those are very simple exercises but that give you the basis for you to start doing your own um, applications and then we we'll might work with your a little bit with your company um, situation or PNID nodes HACCPs you can import your HACCPs inside safeguard profilers start building up some um, layer protection analysis scenarios and, and from there after then you go and then you start using the tool uh, and applying it to, to your day-to-day -day work my name Guillermo Pacanis and my background is an electrical engineer uh, PNG I'm a TUV Rhineland Session to Mental System Functional Safety Engineer. I've been in the industry for more than 26, 27 years. Uh, I've taught several courses in process automation. I've done commissioning, I've done uh, operations, I've done... Uh, I've been implicated in almost every phase of our project. Let's start then with the um, Safeguard Profiler, the safety life cycle. What is a safety life cycle? or more specifically what is a safety instrument system safety life cycle and what are the phases right so um, we have the um, hazard and risk analysis phase um, and if you make reference to IC 61511 from where this um, diagram comes in that would be making reference to subclause 8 that with respect to hazard and risk analysis then the next phase will be allocation of safety functions uh, to protection layers that would be sub clause 9 that's pretty much when you start looking at the safeguard profiler application right so we start getting inf data from the hazard and risk assessment inputting into the safeguard profiler and then we start working with layer protection analysis or risk graph to determine whether we need a safety instrument to function or not and if we do need a safety instrumented function, we'll start already creating the safety requirement specifications, right? So the first thing that is needed that, that we have there is a target already from the layer protection analysis or from the risk graph, right? From the seal determination metho methodology. We already have a target probability of failure on demand or we have a, a target risk reduction that or needs to be achieved by that safety instrumented function then next we're going into design and development of safety instrument systems right so by this time you are in the that phase that applies to subclose 11 and 12. this design and development of other means of risk reduction there is also part of layer protection analysis it's all part of subclause 9 and those are other type of protection analysis uh, other type of safeguards those safeguards are for example mechanical type like a um, process safety valve like um, fire and gas system and so on then we go into installation commissioning and validation that would be a different totally different phase so we go into the implementation quadrant quad, right so construction so we go installation commissioning and validation validation for us mean testing those are sub clauses 14 and 15 why do we make so much reference to this IC 61511 well these are guidelines this is a standard these are best practices right so we try to use in industries something called uh, recognize and acceptable and, and general good engineering good practices so every facility should be using those engineering good practices as a matter of fact it's part of law in some other countries so it is always good to learn f or to uh, use the learnings from other companies that have been there uh, and have gone through p 
perhaps uh, mishaps and it is good f uh, to take advantage so that it doesn't happen to us, right? So if we follow this, it is certain point of view for sure that we're going to be uh, doing our due diligence and everything is uh, going to be better with respect to uh, operating safely. So Safeguard Profilers is a tool that allows you or, or it gives you the opportunity to show due diligence um, because this tool uh, allows you to uh, construct or to operate in, in that uh, area. So then we go into the final phases which are operations and maintenance that has subclause 16 then as everything changes in the world every time there is a change you have to study it, that change you have to look at whether it's required that change whether it's going to bring something uh, better looking at the way it is today sometimes yes it is a required change but that has to be analyzed that cannot be taken lightly we're talking about safeguards and safeguards are risk reduction measures that we are inputting into our process systems in such a way that they are functionally safe. So there's the first functionally safe description. What is it functionally safety? Then we go into MOC, management of change, close 617. And at the end of the safety life cycle, either you keep running in a cycle or you decommission or you retire your equipment and you cannot just leave it in there. You should have to decommission your equipment very safely. Don't abandon, don't leave tanks full of uh, nasty chemicals and so on. So don't leave uh, live circuits, don't leave equipment that might be activating on its own uh, or later on being uh, a danger for others, right? So that's very important part also of that. So th and there are some other tasks that are continuously running throughout the safety life cycle, for example, management of functional safety. So we're going to look at uh, all these assumptions with respect to management. So we are assuming where we're doing this work of uh, hazard analysis, layer protection analysis, seal verification. There's a lot of assumptions that we're saying, well, okay, we know we're doing this engineering and design today, and we know that someone in the future is going to be managing this, is going to be making sure that everything's inside these uh, specifications that we're creating today, right? So now you hear about the safety requirement specifications. So keep inside those specifications. Don't deviate from those specifications. There is a lot of effort went through in there, those specifications. So you have to keep them uh, running well and uh, as intended. 